What's up guys, my name is Westy, and welcome to my review of the Cone Pure gaming mouse from Rocat. First of all, I just want to say thanks to Pixel Enemy and Rocat for supplying me this mouse. I'm not in any way being paid to review this mouse or make it look better than it actually is. I'm just going to give it a fair review, and uh, then you guys can make what you will of it. So let's get straight into it. The first thing you're going to notice is this thing is packaged pretty well. The whole feel of the box, it's actually got a magnetised lid. That thing there on the front actually opens up to reveal the mouse inside, and it's all magnetised, so it's very well built, and uh, it gives quite a premium feel to the product. Also, you can see the mouse sitting beside it there. That's it lit up. You can have different settings for that, but we'll get to that later. That's the basic look of the mouse, and uh, underneath that is the Razer Tato mouse pad that I'm going to be using for this review as well. So once you've got the mouse out of the box and plugged in, this is what you're going to be presented with. The thing looks rather swish, it's a matte black finish and it's got the uh, the Rocat logo on the left hand side of the mouse with a light up LED logo on the hand or the palm of the mouse as well. And one of the main things this mouse proclaims to have is sort of an MMO compatibility. Now what I mean by that is it's got quite a lot of buttons on the face of the mouse. You've got left and right mouse click, you've got two thumb buttons, you've got the mouse wheel back and forwards which of course is clickable as well, and you've got a plus and minus DPI button on the centre of the mouse too. That's just nine buttons, but it's not the fullest extent of what you can use those buttons for, and we'll get to that in a couple of minutes' time. For dimensions, and just to sort of show you guys what this mouse will actually look and feel like when you're gaming with it, I've got it up here next to my Razer Mamba, which is the mouse that I use for gaming. And uh, the Razer Mamba is uh, about half an inch longer, and uh, it's significantly heavier than the, uh, the cone as well. The cone is a very light mouse, considering what it can actually do. And um, to be honest, they, could, they proclaim it's a mid-sized mouse, and uh, it's good for people with sort of mid to size hands, but for me, I've got mid size hands, fits perfectly. But I can't see why it wouldn't be a problem if you do have larger hands, that this mouse wouldn't fit your hand too. So that's now the fundamentals of the mouse out of the way. There is some instructions in the box of the mouse to say to go onto the Rocat website and download the latest drivers and software. And this is where the magic starts to happen with this mouse. So once you're downloaded the software and you've opened it up, this is what you're presented with. This program is basically a central hub where you can control pretty much any part of the mouse that you feel you want to change. So on the first page here, we're given pretty much your standard options for a mouse. You've got sensitivity, vertical scroll speed, and horizontal tilt. And then you've also got the DPI switcher on the right hand side. Now this is where the plus and minus buttons on the mouse physically actually come into play. The Rocat Cone Pure actually gives you the ability to on the fly change your DPI settings from five different levels. And you can pretty much set them from anywhere from 200 DPI all the way up to 8200. This is down to the laser that's built into the Pure, it's called the ProAIM Laser Sensor R3. So as you can see, all five of those settings are customizable, and as you push the plus button on the mouse, of course your DPI will get higher, and then pushing the minus will reduce it back down again. And then along the bottom of the screen there, you'll see that there are five different gaming profiles, which means that you can have five different game setups on the mouse as well. This is due to the 576 kilobytes of onboard memory that are available in this mouse. That can store all of your settings, including the color changes that you will get to in a second. Next we're moving on to button combinations. Now as I've already said, there are nine different buttons or physical movements on the mouse that can be used at once, and then in comes Easy Shift. Easy Shift allows you to have up to 18 different combinations on the mouse by using one button in combination with another. Mouse button 4 or 5, or the thumb buttons, can be assigned to be the Easy Shift button, and once that is held, clicking another button will cause the mouse to do a different function than what its primary button should do. Essentially, it's like holding shift on your keyboard and then clicking another button, and it will do something different to you just clicking the button without holding shift. This is a really great feature if you are any kind of gamer, really, but it's specifically good for MMOs, because I know there are a lot of button combos in that game required, and a lot of different buttons that need to be pressed for different movements and stuff like that. So the fact that they're all controlled on your mouse really frees up your hand on the keyboard as well. Okay, so now we're going to move on to some more of the advanced features that this mouse can offer you. One specific one that I really liked, actually, was that I found that using this mouse on a table was much more uncomfortable than using it on a mouse mat to begin with. Up until recently, I had only been gaming using my desk, and until I bought a gaming mouse pad, I never really saw the difference. But the Pure goes one step further by analysing the surface that you're gaming on, and then matching that to the mouse. And overall, this will improve the performance of the mouse. This system is called Tracking Control, and that it ties in with the Distance Control as well, which is where the mouse will know how high you've lifted it off the table, and you can change the settings so that the mouse won't move if you lift it off the surface that you're gaming on. 
all of these are pretty useful. I know from time to time people do pick the mouse up off the desk and then move it back into the middle of their mouse mat if they've been moving it around and such. And uh, it can stop you flinging your player or the field of view around on the game because as you've picked the mouse up, uh, it will stop moving. Now this is something that we all like to do. We all like to customise things and make it our own. And uh, this is where the Rocap Pure sort of sets itself apart from certain other competitors. Of course a lot of gaming mice these days do have illumination settings like my Razer Mamba you can light up the scroll wheel of the mouse and of course the docking station has a glow underneath that matches the colour of the scroll wheel. But there are only a certain few colours that I can pick from. However with the Pure you can pick up to 16.8 million colours. So if you like a certain shade of green or a certain hue of orange you're going to be able to find it. And there are three different settings for the lighting on this mouse as well. You can have it fully on, switched on all the time. You can have it pulsing so that every few seconds or so it goes bright and then turns off and then goes bright again. Or you can just not have the light at all, but can't see why you wouldn't want the light on it. It look, does look pretty cool. Another feature of the program that I really liked is it tracks the sort of statistics of the mouse and how you've used it. It tells you all your left and right mouse button clicks, middle buttons and thumb button clicks, scroll wheels up and down so it tells you how many times you've actually click scrolled the mouse and it tells you the total distance that you've used the mouse as well. And this is more or less a gimmick but there are certain trophy achievements that you can unlock with this mouse as well. I guess with the amount of clicks that you've done or the amount of distance that you've moved the mouse you'll unlock trophies for the mouse to show your progression of how you've used it. I think it's a really cool feature, yeah it might be a bit gimmicky, but it's all, uh, it's all good fun and it does make the mouse enjoyable to use. So now let's get into a little bit of gameplay. Now uh, I've been using the mouse for about a week now and uh, this footage was recorded just uh, a couple of hours ago as a sort of reference of how I'm using the mouse right now. And uh, I am going to compare it to the Mamba because that's what I've been using for about four months. So I'm pretty comfortable with that mouse. Moving to this, I didn't have a, a, a huge amount of problem. Uh, I just found that the weight of the mouse was the real issue for me. And uh, after a few games of Rush and a couple of team deathmatch games, I got really comfortable with it. For me, the Mamba was significantly heavier. Now, if you don't know, the Mamba is like a wireless gaming mouse, and it was the first one that Razer ever produced. And uh, it's got this no lag system in it, and it works really well. But uh, it's got quite a heavy battery compartment in it, and that's something that the Pure doesn't have because it is a wired gaming mouse. I found the clicks of the mouse to be quite pleasant, quite easy to use. They weren't too hard to press, but yeah, they didn't ping too much either. Uh, the thumb buttons are well placed. They could have been put further down the mouse a little bit. There is a grip on the side of the mouse where your thumb sits, and then you move your thumb up to push the button. Um, it felt like it was a little bit too high on the side of the mouse for me. Yeah, I've still got used to it. I do use them for sort of defibs in Battlefield 3 and stuff like that. Um, the DPI on the mouse, I don't tend to change a huge amount. Uh, I change it when I go back to Windows, but uh, really it's just stuck a thousand DPI. So those plus and minus buttons, I could really be using for something else in game. Uh, but the amount of customization that is available, I'm pretty much sure you're going to find your perfect button setup with this mouse anyway. But anyway, that is the end of this video, guys, and the end of this review as well. I hope you've enjoyed it, and it's given you some insight into what gaming mice are like and what Rocat have to offer you. As I've said in a few previous videos, I am going to be giving this mouse away to one of you guys. Uh, I've been using it for about a week, so there's no sort of wear and tear on it at all. You're going to be pretty, pretty much getting a brand new £60 gaming mouse. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning, I am going to be giving it away on Friday of this week. You're going to need to watch to the end of my next Battlefield video that goes up on Friday, and I will announce the winner. It's going to be a random subscriber from my subscriber list, so everyone has a fair chance of winning it. But yeah, that's the end of this video, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. My name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.